Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. I'm Jeremy Pearsons, and I'm so thankful to be back again with you today. We're going to get to know each other this week and all in the next week. Really, we're going to get to know God. We're going to get to know him in his word, and I'm so thankful. If you missed yesterday's broadcast, I encourage you to go back uh, to kcm.org and, and check out where we've already been. We're coming before the Lord and believing that his word is going to set the expectation for our lives for the remainder of this year and beyond. And again, I'm just so honored and thrilled to get to spend this time together with you. And I, I'm thankful that you're taking the time. I'm thankful that you are tuning into the Word of God and giving Him your attention, giving Him your affection. This is honoring God. This is how we honor Him. And like we said on yesterday's broadcast, He said, those who honor me, I will honor. And just by taking the time that you are right now and turning your attention to Him, showing Him this honor, guess what He does in response to that? He turns His attention to you. He begins to honor you and elevate you and increase you. And this is something you and I cannot live without. So again, let me just say thank you to my grandparents, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, for allowing me this opportunity to get to come together with you around the Word of God. And let's come together again in faith today. Let's pray and we'll get right back into the Word. Father, we love you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for how good you are, how good you've been to us. We thank you for the good things you've done the great things you're doing, and the greater things that are yet to come. I pray over everybody watching and listening to these broadcasts today, and I ask you, Lord, to take your word and get it down deep on the inside of them. Cause it to take root, spring up, and bear fruit. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. Amen. If you've got your Bible with you, I want you to go with me once again to the book of John, chapter 10, and I want to look at what Jesus said in verse 10. This is where we began yesterday. And let's go back over it together again. John 10, 10, Jesus said, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The New Living Translation of this scripture says, My purpose was to give them life, that they would have it, have a, a rich and satisfying life. Don't you love those words? Life more abundantly, a rich and satisfying life. But like we talked about on yesterday's broadcast, if you will give attention to God and do His Word, just like you're doing right now, His Word will serve to elevate your expectation of what you will see in this life. The promises of His Word will serve to... to if you let them get in your heart, stir up faith on the inside. And even if it's something you haven't yet experienced it, if you'll lay hold of it by faith, it will set an expectation for you. But like we said before, I've noticed this. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in many others. There is a tendency to get frustrated. There is a tendency to get weary and worn out in the fight of faith. If you are in that space between what you are experiencing and what you are expecting, I hope that makes sense to you. I don't really know another way to say it. What you're experiencing right now in your life, the condition that you're in right now, and the space between there and what you're expecting to see. Now, that's one thing I've loved about this ministry from the time I was a little boy growing up in this household of faith. We let the Word of God shape our expectation. We let the, the Word of God and the promises of God elevate our expectation. And even if we weren't yet experiencing or walking in something, if we saw it in the Word, we knew we could have it. Now, it's one thing, though, to get excited about it right then and there. You got good news and somebody tells you you don't have to be sick anymore. You don't have to be broke anymore. You don't have to be depressed anymore. Why? Because the word of God makes promise to you that he's not only paid the price for you spiritually, but you can have that same kind of abundant life working in your soul, working in your body, working in every area of your life. Well, you hear that, you get excited about it, you believe it. But what about the space between when you hear it and when you see it come to pass in your life. 
It's in that space between that people cry out and you've heard them say it, I've said it, you've said it, be honest, we've all said it. Why isn't this working? I, I, I see that Jesus said it. He came to give me abundant life. And then you look around and say, this is anything but abundant life. Now, the interesting thing is, if you stop and think about it, everybody Jesus said these words to on that day and everybody who's hearing them today, every one of these individuals had a heart beating in their chest. In other words, they were already alive and yet he said, I came to give you a kind of life that you're not yet living, life more abundantly. So that should say to you and to me that there is more life available to us, more life that can be working in us than what we might be experiencing right now. So the question is, what do you do in the space between what you are experiencing and the a more abundant life that you are expecting? And like we said on yesterday's broadcast, it's in that space that Satan goes to work as hard as he can to wear people out, to make them weary in their well-doing. And it's in that frustration when they're crying out, why isn't this working, that they give up. But Paul said when he came to the end of his life, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And listen to these words, I have kept the faith. I kept it. That tells me that there were many opportunities through his life to lose the faith, to have his faith stolen from him, to, have, to, to, to be robbed of his faith. I know he experienced it because I have and you have. But he came to the end and he said, I kept it. I didn't let my enemy take my faith. I didn't let him steal it. I kept it all the way to the end. And that's what you want to be able to say at the end of every day, and at the end of this life, Father, I kept the faith. I held on to it with everything I've got. I am a keeper of the faith. Why don't you say those words out loud right now? I am a keeper of the faith. Now listen, you can say that, but there will be opportunity to lose it along the way. Don't let it happen. Don't let these things be taken from you. But Jesus told us right here in these, in these verses, there is a thief and he comes to steal. What's he after? He's after your faith. He's after your confidence in the word. And if he can get in there in that space between what you're experiencing and what you're expecting and pressure you hard enough and get these words coming out of your mouth, it's not working, it's not working, it's not working. What's happening every time you're saying that? He's taking a piece of your faith. He's taking a piece of your faith. But we're gonna get into the word and find out, uh, as the Lord helps us in these broadcasts that are coming up, how to be keepers of the faith. And we're going to find out from Jesus himself why it may not be working. Let's be honest with ourselves. Let's be honest with him. If it's not working, we need to find out why. What Jesus said here in John 10.10, 10, this may come as a big shock and surprise to you, was connected to what he said in John 10, 1 through 9. That's deep, isn't it? That's deep revelation right there. Here's revelation for you. John 10, 10 comes right after John 10, 1 through 9. Wow, powerful, right? Well, what's John 10, 1 through 9 all about? Well, back up and let's find out. He says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name. Listen to this. And he leads them out. What does the shepherd do? He calls the sheep by their name and he leads them out. Now, Jesus, just a few verses later, is going to identify himself as the good shepherd. So he's the shepherd here in this situation. He's the shepherd, we're the sheep. And he says the shepherd calls his sheep by name and his sheep know his voice and he begins to lead them out. When he brings out, verse four, his own sheep, he goes before them. The sheep follow him, why? Because they know his voice. 
See, this keeps coming up in these verses right here, that the shepherd is speaking and the sheep are listening. The shepherd calls the sheep by name. The sheep recognize his voice and they follow because he leads them out. Verse four again, when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Yet they, w- they will by no means follow a stranger. They'll flee from him for they do not know the voice of strangers. Then Jesus said in verse seven, assuredly, I say to you, I'm the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robber- robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he'll be saved. He will go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. What I'm trying to get you to see here is that this promise of abundant life is inseparably connected to hearing the voice of your good shepherd. You cannot have one without the other. Now, maybe you've heard good, strong teaching on John 10, 10. Jesus came to give you life and more life more abundantly, give you a rich and satisfying life. The Amplified Bible says to the full until it overflows. He talked in that translation about how he came that you would have and enjoy life. Now, every time you hear these words, what's it doing? If you believe it, it's elevating the expectation. It's causing you to look into the future and say, that's the kind of life Jesus came to give me. That's the kind of life I'm going to live. Life more abundantly. Abundantly means just that, to the full, till it overflows. You look it up, it literally means excessive. It means way too much. Not long ago, I was scrolling through one of my feeds online and came across a video uh, of a minister, short little actual audio clip of him and it said something on there about the prosperity gospel. And he was talking about the prosperity gospel. Now, now just as food for thought here, when you hear that term prosperity gospel, you need to check and see where that's coming from. Because for the, the, the best that I can tell, that is a term that men have made up and it was mostly people who were critics of a message and that's what they labeled it to criticize it. You don't see that, that term prosperity gospel in the scripture. But what you do see is Jesus saying, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to who? To who? The poor. So is there prosperity in it? Yes, there is. But this individual, I, I clicked on this link and he's Going on and on, it's stuff I've heard before, probably most of you have heard before, very, very critical of what I would be preaching to you right now and what this broadcast would, what you're used to hearing from this ministry. And he kept saying this, that that prosperity teaching was heretical and, and uh, false because Jesus is enough and how that health and wealth teaching was wrong because Jesus is enough. In other words, you're not supposed to have your eyes on any kind of physical or material thing. Why? Because Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. And he kept saying it over and over. Jesus is enough. And you know, on the surface, I would hear that and I I wouldn't think that I'd disagree with that. But as I was hearing it, the Lord spoke up on the inside of me and he said, no, I'm not. And it caught me off guard. It caught my attention. I know many of you, it caught your attention right now when I said it. He said, no, I am not. This guy's saying, Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. And here the Spirit of God is saying to me, no, I am not. And man, he had my attention. But you know what he said to me next? He said, I'm not enough. I'm more than enough. I am excessive. The life I came to give is not just enough. It's more than enough. So to say that Jesus is enough and you should just be satisfied with that, I understand where it's coming from. But if you're going to go back to what Jesus said he is, you're not going to say Jesus is enough. You have to say Jesus is more than enough. Praise God. He's more than enough to save you spiritually. He's more than enough to heal you in your soul and to heal you in your body. He's more than enough to provide for you whatever it is you need in this material and financial world because he's more than enough. He's not just enough. He's more than enough. But this promise of more than enough 
What you need to see is connected to being his sheep who knows and recognizes his voice. These things are inseparably inseparably connected. So if you've been saying it's not working, if, if your expectation was life more abundantly and your experience is life less abundantly, less than enough, here's one of the first places you need to go back and check. Am I tuned in to the voice of my good shepherd? It's just a simple question. Am I listening? Am I listening? And Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. The first thing he said is, I call my own sheep by name. Now, that's that's a powerful thing, and we tend to read over it, but he knows your name. Jesus knows your name. Jesus has never one time looked at you or me or any of his sheep and said, okay, wait, hold on. (laughs) Hold on, wait a second. Don't tell me. No, 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 no. I'm good with faces. Hold on one second. Uh, He's never not known your name. I teased my grandfather about this. He and I we're doing a, a week or two of broadcast together one time. This was years ago. We may have actually been sitting at this table right here, one just like it. We were in this studio and he had just come in off the road, man. He was, <laughs> he had been preaching and we're sitting here getting ready to start these broadcasts and they count us down and the, the red light comes on and they, you, you know, Papa, hello everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. I'm Kenneth Copeland. And um, he welcomes everybody to the broadcast. He introduces me and we're going to get into the word together. And he looks at me and he says, now, Jerry, when the Lord said, and he caught himself, he called me Jerry. He caught himself. He said, Jerry, what am I saying? Jeremy. Well, I get it. You know, how many of you've got kids? You got grandkids. Mimi and Papa got a bunch of grandkids. I think I've lost count. What do we got? Like 14, 15, 16 cousins now. That's a lot of kids to remember. I get it. I mean, you know what? And like I said, the man had been preaching and he's, he, he, you know, a lot going on. And on top of that, he's preached with a guy named Jerry for, you know, over 50 years. So cut him some slack, right? And you got kids, you got grandkids. You, some of you got two or three kids. How many times have you looked at him and gone through all the names of the other kids before you got the name you were trying to land on? It happens. I get it. So we laugh about it there for a second. I kid you not, a few minutes later on the same broadcast, he says, now listen, Jerry, when the Lord said, he did it again. My papa, my own flesh and blood called me Jerry. And he caught himself, of course, and we're laughing about it. Here's my point. Jesus has never called me Jerry. (laughs) He's not, not one time, not one time. And if my own flesh and blood can get it wrong. And we're, we're close, man. I mean, I've known him my whole life. <laughs> he was there day one. What I'm telling you is we're laughing about it, but I'm using this to paint a picture for you. There is a level of intimacy available to you and Jesus that you may not be experiencing right now, but it's connected to you walking in life more abundantly. As a matter of fact, there is no life more abundantly apart from you knowing the voice of your good shepherd. And he will call you by your name. He knows your name. If everybody in your, else in your life forgets your name and forgets you even exist, Jesus doesn't and Jesus won't. He knows your name. He calls you by your name and you can come to a place in your fellowship with him that you so know the voice of your good shepherd. I call it a, hey, it's me kind of relationship. You know what I mean by that? Hey, it's me. In, in the days before caller ID, the phone would ring. And I remember being a kid in the days before cell phone and we're sitting around the dinner table and the phone on the wall, yeah, on the wall would ring. You Maybe some of you remember this. They were on the wall and they had these big, long six or eight foot cords attached to them and you'd walk around the house as far as the cord would let you walk. But the phone would ring and we'd all kind of look at each other and go, I wonder who it is, right? Maybe you remember these days, the mystery behind who's calling me. And you pick up the phone and you say, hello. And we've all experienced this where the person on the other end says, hey, it's me. Now, either you know that voice or you're breaking out in a cold sweat right now. And I don't know why. 
I and others, we didn't just say, oh, I'm sorry, who's this? But there was always that pressure when somebody would say, hey, it's me. And if you don't recognize the voice, you go, hey, you, how are you doing? And you hope that they talk long enough to where you've placed that voice or you recognize it or they give some sort of clue as to who they are and you put it together because it's embarrassing, right, to not know the voice. But hey, it's me. There are people who could call you and call her ID or none. They could say, hey, it's me. And because of the history you have together and because of the life you've lived together, you know that voice. You recognize it. You know it anywhere. And you don't need them to reintroduce themselves to you. If Sarah, my wife, were to call me, and for some reason I didn't know it was her on the other end of the line, all she'd have to say is, hey, babe, it's me. I wouldn't be like, I'm sorry, who's this? She wouldn't have to say, it's me, Sarah Pearson's your wife. We've been married 13, almost 14 years now. We have two children together. We're in ministry with each other. Oh, I know you. Yeah, how you doing? We don't have to go through our entire history together for me to know that voice. Well, that comes as a result of intimacy. It comes as a result of time, day in, day out, spent with each other. And I know that voice. I would know that voice if she was talking to me in our house. I would know that voice if we were in a crowd of people and she yelled from across a space, from across the yard, from, uh, with, with hundreds of people between us. My ears are tuned to that voice. I know that voice. And I'm telling you, there is that kind of relationship and fellowship available to you and Jesus where you know that voice where he speaks up on the inside and he says, hey, it's me. And you're not sitting there going, oh, is this God? Is this my flesh? Is this the devil? I don't know. The only reason you wouldn't know is because his voice is still a stranger to you. And you don't follow the voice of a stranger. But you can come to know that voice. And you get to know that voice as he speaks through his word. These are not just words and ink on a page, this thing's alive. It's living. The Word of God is alive, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide asunder the soul and the spirit. That means that the Word of God is so alive that it can show you the difference between what's going on in the soul and what's going on in the spirit. The Word of God is that dividing line, and you come to know His voice as you come to know His Word, and you fellowship with His Word, and you fellowship with His Word. And then you find out the same one that wrote these words is living big on the inside of you. And you know the author's voice. He speaks and you recognize his voice. Now, where is that voice taking you? He already said he speaks his, his he calls a sheep by name. They know his voice. And listen, he leads them out. Out of what? Out of whatever it is you're in that you need out of. Jesus is your good shepherd and he will lead you out. And that's what he's been doing from the very moment you called on him as the savior to be the savior and the Lord of your life. He went to work right then leading you out. He went to work leading you out of sin, leading you out of darkness, leading you out of sickness, leading you out of poverty, leading you out of death. But listen, he said, I lead my sheep and they go in and out. In other words, I'm not just leading you out of something. I'm leading you into something else, he said. He's leading you out of, of sin and darkness and death. And he's leading you in to life more abundantly. But there's no way to get into that kind of life apart from hearing the voice of your good shepherd. He went to work when you called on him to be your Lord, leading you out of sin and into his righteousness, leading you out of darkness and into light, leading you out of death and into life more abundantly and life everlasting. But you don't get there without following the voice of your good shepherd. So if there's space between what you're experiencing and what you're expecting, go back to the voice. Get tuned in again to the voice and say it. I know the voice of my good shepherd. I'll be back in just a moment.
For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. True prosperity comes when you prioritize your most precious commodity, time, to seeking the Lord. From Glory to Glory is a 52-week devotional written by Jeremy and Sarah Pearsons as a tool to help you give the best of your time to growing in God. Pastors of Legacy Church in Colorado, the Pearsons are passionate about serving and teaching others to live by faith in the day of grace. As you use their devotional, learn what it means to feed on the faithfulness of God. Know what God is speaking to you for your life. As a child of God, you're meant to be continually moving forward from one level of glory to the next. Train yourself to respond with faith in every circumstance. See your family, finances, every area of your life flourish. Become a doer of the Word of God and live in whole life prosperity. Make every moment a glory moment and take your life to the next level. Order your copy of Jeremy and Sarah Pearson's devotional from Glory to Glory for nine pounds. Outside the UK, call for postage. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01225 787 310. Use this 52 week devotional as your spiritual journey companion. Offer good for 30 days. Our product offer this week is From Glory to Glory. It's a 52 week devotional that my wife Sarah and I wrote together. And we call it From Glory to Glory because we believe that as you spend time, consistent time, day in, day out, week after week with God and His Word, this is the kind of life you're going to live from glory to glory increasing degrees of the glory of God manifestation of your life all the time. That's our heart for you. That's our heart behind this. And listen, we believe when you spend time in the word like this and with this as a study guide and an aid, it's going to quiet your mind. It brings peace to your spirit. And I encourage you to use this book to help help seek the face of God, find out what he wants for your life and then share it with people, share it with them so that they can get the same good news about our good God into their lives as well. We want you to have this. Uh, when you take time to listen to God, he's going to reveal to your spirit how to live every day in victory, how to walk in love, how to flourish in your relationships and experience whole life prosperity. So to order this devotional, just go to kcm.org. And I've heard my grandfather say this before, but kcm.org is your study. Study center. It's your personal study center. There you can find free resources, teaching materials on topics that are important to you, things like healing, protection, prayer, family, prosperity, so many more. Listen, you never have to feel disconnected from the Word of God. Just log on to kcm.org. Keep these promises of God's Word going into your eyes, into your ears. Let them get down into your heart. Declare them by faith and watch things change in the world around you. Thanks so much for joining us today on the broadcast. We'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, remember that Jesus is Lord. Go to kcm.org.uk to receive your free digital download of today's Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. 2021 is the year of the local church, a year of divine healing, divine health, divine prosperity, and divine recovery.